everyone, it's Pasha 3.22 Ancestor, and I want to talk about the changes to impending doom with the patch notes, and I want to answer some people's questions regarding the builds. So the first big question that's been asked, is temporal chains fine? Is it dead? Is it is it gone? Is it gutted? Answer is no. Not at all. Technically, slight nerf slash big nerf, but realistically, for 95% of situations, no. It's literally untouched. You will not notice these changes one bit at all. It's basically going to play exactly the same. So the two big things that we're going to be talking about here is the temp chains nerf. And then for later mid and end game poison setups, the veiled modifier nerf. Let's start with the temp chains nerf as it'll pretty, pretty much explain the veiled modifier nerf as well. And we can go from there. So the way temporal chains normally works is when you apply it onto enemy, it makes all other effects on enemies expire slower. And this used to be 40%. It's now going to be 25%. What this effectively means is let's say I had a 10 second poison and I apply temporal chains and then I put a poison on the enemy that lasted 10 seconds. Well, the 40% expired slower would then mean, assuming that I had no other modifiers, that it would then instead last 14 seconds. Because poison does damage every few ticks, that means that the longer duration, the more total damage the poison is going to do. It's not so much as total damage over duration, but more so damage per tick so the longer duration the more total damage you do it's quite opposite of ignites where ignites are a big damage over a small portion and you ideally always want to make them faster so you can reapply a new ignite and that usually gives you more dps well for poisons you want to stack as many as you can and the better the bigger the duration the better because then they'll do more damage individually now the thing about this and the reason why this doesn't matter is because of poison ramp times so if we look in path of building really quickly we can see that for this path of building, my poison duration is 7.53 seconds. What this means is for me to actually do full DPS, to actually be doing 6 million DPS, it would take me seven and a half seconds of holding down impending doom to actually do this DPS. That's why poison numbers and path of building always are a little bit misleading and they're always not fully true. That means if we held down impending doom for half the time, we do have to DPS. Realistically, this is not going to matter because most things are going to die before we even reach this. The only things that are going to actually live seven and a half seconds like this are going to be maybe be some map bosses, some invitation bosses, and all the pinnacle bosses. But even then, realistically, your ramps would be so large and the bosses don't really have that much health, especially once you put more money into the, these builds, that even a half ramp, even a three second ramp, it's already going to be enough to phase the boss. There really isn't anything that can actually take this to the face because all the bosses just have phases. So you just phase everything before you fully ramp. And if we want to look at the nerfs, if we want to put in here 37% less temporal chains curse effect, which is like effectively exactly the nerf, as you can see, our DPS goes down quite a bit and our poison ramp goes from seven and a half seconds to five seconds. And it really doesn't matter. The only time you're going to actually see a DPS loss is if you're holding down your impending doom button for more than five seconds post five seconds yes it's actually quite a big nerf especially when we combine it with the veiled modifier nerf we're actually losing somewhere around 40 to 50 percent of our damage depending on how much curse effect you had since curse effect is now substantially weaker but again for anything that doesn't last that long it completely doesn't matter and your dps is going to be literally exactly the same the only thing that really matters and the only thing that actually makes you kill mobs instantly is just straight up your poison DPS. This is honestly a more important number to look at because the higher the poison DPS, the higher your instantaneous damage is. So the faster you instantly one tap mobs, right? A higher total DPS is not going to make your mapping feel better. What is going to make it feel better is poison DPS and poison DPS is completely untouched because this doesn't do anything to it. In the same line of thinking, the same thing goes for the Veil modifier nerf. A really popular option for basically every single poison build is to have a helmet craft on your helmet that says duration of ailments you inflict while focused is increased by previously 81 to 90 percent this means that you would get a button called focus when you press it you get this buff and then it go away after a few seconds it's basically like a dps cooldown and duration of ailments as i mentioned earlier with how poisons work is a really powerful way to make you do more damage let's pretend this is just 100 for the sake of math this means that those poisons, while I'm focused, will effectively do double damage. 
but also means they're going to last twice as long. So to actually get that full double damage out of this is going to take quite a while. So it's only really good in scenarios where you can't just fully DPS. For example, if you're fighting a boss where you need to apply maybe 10 poison sacks and you have to dodge for 10 seconds, well, if those poison sacks last for those 10 seconds, then you're still doing optimal DPS effectively versus if they only lasted a second or two, then you wouldn't really be hitting the boss. So technically duration and increased poison length is a pretty good stat because then it makes your DPS strong while you're moving. But realistically, it's not going to be that impactful. So the nerf of the Veld modifier from 81 to 90 to 36 to 40, while it does suck, and it will definitely be noticeable for uber DPS. Again, it really doesn't matter because you're going to phase the bosses before you're going to even realistically hit your ramp. So overall, the TLDR is it does not matter. This build, both the Pathfinder and the Occultist versions will feel just as strong as each other and you really won't notice the difference. Now, the other piece of information I want to talk about, which a lot of people have asked about, is Ali, what about Pathfinder version? Well, uh, I just so happen to have a Pathfinder path of building here. Over the next few days, I'll be releasing some videos talking about the Pathfinder version of Impending Doom. I plan to do a leveling guide for it, and then I plan to do a leveling run for it as well. And I want to just very quickly talk about the two differences between them and why you might want to choose one over the other. So the first thing to mention is Pathfinder is going to be a lot tankier. It's going to have a lot better recovery. It's just going to feel like an overall better ascendancy if damage isn't the only thing you care about. The one downside of it is the further you scale it, the weaker it's going to be relative to occultist, just because most of the things that Pathfinder do later into the build don't really help us at all, especially once we go crit. The nice thing about Pathfinder is we'll have permanent charges with nature's adrenaline. And this means that we can run whatever flask we want. And this means that later on, we can run Progenesis in our build and have it permanently be up, which is a massive defensive layer. Not only that, but we can run Sapphire, Topaz, and Ruby Flasks to get a massive amount of elemental EHP, which is going to make this build feel super tanky. Or if you want to get more armor or you want to get more spell suppression, stock it, spell suppression, gear, whatever you want, you can easily fit it through your flask. Pathfinder turns your flask into a portion of your build. It turns your flask into actual gear, similar to how Mage Blood does the same thing. But you're able to get this from day one as soon as you get Nature's Adrenaline. And either as soon as you automate your flasks or decide to manually press them. The other really broken thing about it is Master Surgeon. This is a node that was reworked recently. And what it does is it makes it so your life flask is now effectively permanent. It will never turn off. Typically, when you press your life flask, as soon as you hit full health, your life flask turns off no matter where the duration of it is. This will always keep it going. So let's say your life flask is going. You take half your health. Your life flask is going to immediately start healing you. As soon as you hit full health, let's say you also have some life on kill and some leech or where else the case is. As soon as you go back to full health, your life flask is still going to be going. So if you just immediately get chunked for another 20, 30 percent of your health, as soon as you get to full health, well, you wouldn't have effectively lost charges on your life flask. And it would immediately be there to immediately start healing you up. If we pair this with a really strong flask, if we craft a really, really good flask, then Master Surgeon can effectively give us a few thousand health regen per second for effectively free. And this is just a really strong defensive layer as recovery is a stat that is really difficult to actually get in this build just because we don't really have a good way to get regen and we don't really have a way to get leech since we're a spell build. Otherwise, the rest of Pathfinder, in my opinion, is a little bit lackluster slash is just as good as a cultist. Nature's Reprisal can simply just be seen as a massive damage increase. The effect of Wither is massive and it's a very, very overpowered stat that's very difficult to get which makes Pathfinder competitive in the first place, actually even slightly better and lower gear. And then Master Toxis can also just be seen as a 20% more damage multiplier before any other changes in your build increase or reduce that. But it's effectively just 20% more damage. So there's nothing really special in these two nodes other than just a bunch of damage. Yes, Master Toxis also gives you a poison prolif, but in my opinion, it really isn't that important, nor is it really that impactful to your clear. And it really isn't that noticeable. That is... Especially true when you compare it to Profane Bloom, where Profane Bloom is going to be immediately noticeable. The problem with Master Toxis is it only applies one poison. And that one poison isn't going to immediately like kill everything around the monsters. And because of that, you're not going to insta clear a pack as soon as you kill one monster. The nice thing about Profane Bloom is you have a pack of 20 monsters and you immediately kill one and it procs Profane Bloom, the whole pack's gone. 
everything is just going to be be gone because the pro, the explosion pro lift will just kill everything. And because of that, in my opinion, for clearing, it's going to feel a lot better on occultists just because you'll insta tap basically all packs. The other thing about occultists is it doesn't really provide any defensive layers. Sure, it has withering presence, which gives you hinder, which is kind of nice, I guess, to take a little bit less damage from enemies. And you get 90% chaos and you get 60% chaos resistance for free. So you don't need to worry about your chaos resistance as much. And you basically almost get chaos risk cap for free. But otherwise, there's nothing here that really helps us. Sure, we have cannot be stunned while we have ES, which is going to always be true for Bastion. But it's more of a glass cannon ascendancy. And it's just really good if you want to have substantially more damage, especially as you move on to the crit version, since a cult is going to get access to plus one power charges, which is going to make the crit version substantially stronger. The other thing to talk about is leveling because end game damage and your ascendancy isn't really all that we really need to talk about. The other important thing is leveling, because honestly, in my opinion, I feel like a lot of the time when I make a new character, when other people make new characters, one of the things they look at is how is it to level? How annoying is it to level? Slash, do you really want to relevel a character? And if we compare occultist leveling to Pathfinder leveling, Pathfinder effectively will just give you a really easy and clean character to play from level one all the way up until Mage Blood and Mirrors worth of gear, simply because they don't have to go through a hellish leveling process versus occultist, where occultist, honestly, in my opinion, has a really bad time. You kind of have to just get through the leveling experience to actually get to play an enjoyable build. While pending how you feel about poison concoction, Pathfinder just has a really comfy time the whole time with basically zero issues getting to maps and zero issues getting all the gear that it needs to be able to play in maps. The biggest difference here is that which just kind of gets shafted by GGG. That's the that's the biggest problem here. It's like which which just completely, completely gets shafted. If we want to look at the leveling trees we don't have anything in this area it takes us a while to get the atrophy there's no other damage nodes here unfortunately the right side of the witch starting location is just complete garbage the left side has spell damage which is really nice and cast speed which is also pretty decent for leveling early on but the right side has nothing as a minion node and has energy shield and energy shield is probably the most garbage mechanic especially early on outside of getting a tiny little bit for eldritch battery Outside of that, all the nodes over here just really don't do anything so are, slash are pretty niche or lackluster. So it takes us quite a while to get to atrophy. And the problem is, even if we do just immediately rush to atrophy without picking up anything, there's just no good chaos skills to play because Blight kind of sucks. EDC kind of sucks. They're not really that good. And they're still going to be kind of miserable. So rolling magma is our only best option. But then again, rolling magma doesn't get any damage here. So it's a little bit pain to get through act one through three until we get to poison concoction. Even once we do get to poison concoction, it's not going to immediately feel good until act four, just because it's going to take you a while to get to fatal toxin depression and then picking up another poison node. Because currently you're not going to be near 100% poison chance with this. And you kind of do need one more chaos node, either wasting or swift venoms to really feel good. It's just a problem of where which starts in comparison to where all the chaos based things are. And just the other thing is we just don't get poison concoction as which we have to wait until act three or we have to get it from a friend or we have to just start a character, level it to level 12, get poison concoction, then mule it over to a witch, then start the build, which just feels really bad in my opinion. Now, when we want to compare that to Pathfinder instead, Pathfinder just has probably the easiest time to level in the game period. So in Act 1, the nice thing is we can pick up all the projectile damage nodes here and play Caustic Arrow and Burning Arrow to get through Act 1. That is honestly slightly worse than Rolling Magma. I think Rolling Magma is the easiest way to get through Act 1 in the game currently. But this is still pretty easy, especially since we get a bunch of damage nodes. So it's going to be a very easy time. There's nothing special we need to do. There's no double hitting they have to do with Rolling Magma. There's no having to worry about anything. You just shoot your bow and you have no problems. And then as soon as we get to level 12, as you can see, we're really, really close to Fatal Toxins, which means we can immediately pick it up. We can go get Acuity, which is the better accuracy rating node, instead of picking up Depression, which gives us crit chance, which is useless, where Acuity gives us attack speed. And then immediately by the end of Act 2 into Act 3, we're already at Swift Venoms. We could pick up Multishot without really worrying. We're right next to replenishing Remedies. So it's just everything that you need to be able to play Poison Concoction with no problems. The only downside here is you're not going to really be able to swap the impending doom until you get to maps until you get to vixens 
just because everything related to impending doom, funny enough, is over here by which. And because of that, just pathing over here is just not going to really be efficient. And just your build is just going to suffer. So it's just going to be easier to fulfill a tree, get everything you need to make a comfy build. And then as you get close to maps, that's when you start branching this way and getting ready to eventually go over and pick up, pick up everything you need to play impending doom. So because of that, the leveling is just going to be a lot nicer. And in my opinion, I feel like for a lot of people, that's going to be the appeal of going Pathfinder instead of going Occultist. Is that not only is it going to be substantially tankier, and we'll talk about more tankiness more in other videos, as personally, I don't think I mentioned this yet, but I think I plan to not play Occultist. I think my plan is going to be to actually leak start Pathfinder. But as we get further into a mid and end game setup, we have so many defensive layer options for this build that you know how people call RF Jug immortal? No, 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 no. This is immortal. This build is immortal. It's it's somehow tankier than RF Jug while basically sacrificing no damage. It is dis disgusting the amount of things you could shove into Pathfinder to become super tanky. If you want me to quickly mention some of them, we have Lore Weave and Transcendence allowing us to take our armor and have it affect our elemental damage taken. We have the ability to stack a lot of physical taken as elemental damage, meaning that that physical also gets the benefit from the armor. We then get to also get spell suppression really easily, especially since we get spell suppression over here on the tree. So make capping super, super easy, which will stack with transcendence. We also have eternal damnation, which is going to stack with everything as well, albeit it's going to be kind of expensive this season. But eternal damnation is then going to make your chaos resistance also work. So you only take half and half. So the armor from transcendence is going to be better. Then we have blood notch and we have stun tech, which is going to add another whole defensive layer on top of this. And the fact that we're a pathfinder means we can permanently run sapphire, ruby, and topaz flask, which means that all the damage that's already being taken as elemental is being reduced even more, especially if you stack a little bit more flask effect. You get where I'm going with this. We can stack so many defensive layers on elemental damage, force the majority of our damage to be elemental damage. And then for the tiny amount of damage that is still physical, Blood Dodge completely takes care of all of it. Because of that, Pathfinder will just basically be immortal while still having great damage. If you want to do like 200 million DPS, you're going to want to play Occultist and you're going to want to go crit. And it's still going to take you quite a few divs to actually get to 100, 200 million DPS as crit and pending doom. That's not something very easy to do. And it's not something Pathfinder will be able to do. Like you're not going to be able to scale it to that much damage. But realistically, does that matter for most people? I don't think so. I think most people are just going to want a super tanky build, a super fast build and have something that can scale to a decent amount. I think most people would be happy if their build tops out at 20, 30 million DPS. And Pathfinder as both the poison and as the crit version can very easily do that. And then if you aren't satiated for damage at that point, well, the crit version of Pathfinder should still be able to probably get to 50 to 100 million DPS, which albeit is not going to be as strong as a coldest. And again, I want to mention that is at like a very high end budget, but it'll still be quite a lot of damage to basically instant tap everything in the game and not really see any enemy's health bar ever. That's all I really have to say for this. As I mentioned, I'll have a few more videos coming out this week. I'll have one talking about how to leak start Pathfinder if you're interested in leak starting Pathfinder. I will have a video on Pathfinder with a mid game setup, adding in some of those defensive layers that I mentioned and making this build a lot tankier. And I think towards the start of the season, we'll have a setup that talks about how to play crit impending doom as a Pathfinder. And it should be pretty easy to apply it as well for occultists. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below or come by Twitch. I stream every day and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions there as well. Other than that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you cuties in the next video.